Hey guys, Matt here. So um, I just w uh, finished watching um, uh, quite an enjoyable short video from uh, Lindy Beige from Lloyd um, about uh, medieval swords, uh, during which he talked about uh, long swords and bastard swords and hand and half swords. Um, and I feel that I need to clarify a couple of points um, which I think were perhaps poorly made in that video uh, and perhaps incorrectly made. So the first thing to say is what I'm holding here is usually described in modern historical fencing or HEMA as a long sword. Um, you could describe it as a bastard sword, you could describe it as a hand and a half sword. Some people may even call it a two-handed sword. Now, the first thing to say is that these terms are largely, not, although not entirely, they're largely modern uh, in their applications. Okay, That's not to say they're modern terms, but the way that we choose to apply them to certain weapons is more or less a modern artifact. Okay, um, I've um, I've researched quite a lot of um, medieval English sources, particularly 14th, 15th century sources, uh, because that's my focus of interest in the medieval period. Um, and the terms um, two-handed sword, a long sword, and bastard sword are all used. Okay, but we never really know precisely what they're referring to. Okay. Now, if we look at continental sources, if we look at um, the actual fencing treatises, which actually show these sort of swords in use, uh, we can see that uh, uh, Langenschwert, or Langschwert in German is commonly used, which translates as long sword. Um, and actually, in, in Italy, it's usually a spada a du mani, okay, which means two-handed sword, applied to this sort of length weapon, a weapon that you can use in one hand or two. Okay? The, in fact, in Italian, the large two-handed sword is usually called a spadone, uh, which means big sword or great sword. Um, and in fact, in Spanish sources, it's usually known as a montante. Um, and in German sources, the very big sword is usually known as uh, Biden hander, I believe, or perhaps Weihander. Um, so there we have in the historical sources a range of, of terminologies. In fact, the term bastard sword uh, is used in both English and French sources. However, we do not know precisely what it's referring to. Okay, epe batad or bastard sword. We don't really know what type of sword is being described. Um, and some people have surmised that it's actually not a two-handed sword or not a long sword at all, but it's actually a form of, of one-handed sword with a certain type of blade on it. We, we just basically don't know really what a bastard sword is. There's, there's contradictory evidence one way or the other. Okay? Um, but the overall point to make is that uh, all types of medieval sword, straight double-edged medieval sword, in medieval sources are usually called sword. Okay? Uh, the obsession with classification and breaking down uh, typologies of, of swords, breaking down types of sword into as many different subsets and subgroups that we possibly can, is really something that we get from our Victorian forebearers who wanted to scientifically categorise everything. And of course it started off with the study of nature and animals and so on so and so forth. Um, but quickly spread onto swords, and really, um, you know, it was Ewart Oakeshott uh, who really took this to the extreme in the middle of the 20th century through to the, basically from the 1950s to the 1980s, of actually breaking down medieval swords into typologies, types of blades, types of crossguard, types of pommel. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all. It's very useful to scientifically study the development of weapons over time to be able to do that, okay? Uh, but what we have to remember is that medieval people usually didn't give a damn about those kind of descriptions. Okay? This is usually called sword or spada okay? or schwert. Um, it's not usually, in most medieval sources, it is not usually specified as being a long sword or a bastard sword or a hand and a half sword. It's just a sword. Okay? So. If we want to call this a bastard sword, or a long sword, or a hand and a half sword, largely this is a modern choice for modern uh, weapons, or at least ancient weapons in modern museums. Okay, um, that's that's my first point. 
The second point that came up in, in Lloyd's video was about the use of these in one hand. Now, making a subjective um, opinion on the use of a sword in one hand is always going to be based on two factors. One, the sword, and secondly, you. Okay? Now, there are some swords I can happily, some big swords I can happily use in one hand, and some big swords I can't happily use in one hand. But the important thing to note is that these so-called hand and a half swords or long swords are shown being used one-handed in the medieval and renaissance treatises um, in a variety of ways. Firstly, they're shown used on horseback with one hand. You cannot easily use a two-handed sword on horseback. It is shown in some medieval and renaissance art being used two-handed on horseback, but of course to do so you have to drop the reins of your horse. So generally speaking this sort of sword is employed one-handed when on horseback. The second time when you use it one-handed is when you are grabbing or grappling your opponent. So if you look at any of the famous and freely available online uh, medieval treatises or Renaissance treatises for, from the likes of Fiore Delivery or Paulus Cal or um, Hans Talhofer or so on and so forth, Filippo Vardi and so on, you will see there are lots of techniques where the left hand and sometimes the right hand, but usually the left hand, assuming you're right-handed, uh, is used to either grab the opponent's weapon or grab a part of their body or uh, throw them or grapple with them or such like, Do, doing things that are up close leaving this hand free, usually to stab, sometimes to cut, sometimes to pommel, sometimes to hit with a cross guard. Okay? In other words, to use this offensively whilst you de detain and occupy the opponent or their weapon with this hand. Okay? And sometimes, as I mentioned, sometimes it's the other way around. Um, although in Italian sources it's almost always grappling with the left hand. Uh, but German sources do occasionally show to grappling with the right hand. Um, so that's the second time when you use this as a one-handed sword, essentially. And the final time I want to mention is actually um, it, in conjunction with shields and bucklers. So contrary to what Lloyd said in his video, in actual fact there are um, examples, lots of examples in art, of what are clearly um, long-handled hand-and-a-half swords or long swords being used both with shields of various types, right up to the uh, pavis, uh, big large shields, and right the way down to bucklers as well. And if you look in Paulus Cal's um, manual, you see that in the sword and uh, buckler plates, he actually very clearly shows uh, the buckler being used in the left hand, and what's very clearly a long sword with a long handle being used in the right hand. So, um, and finally, just to say <coughs> that Lloyd is quite correct that um, this this type of uh, longsword, bastard sword, was indeed used one-handed for special techniques such as lancing out the sword one-handed. And what I want to clarify is actually this was done with the big greatsword, big two-handed sword also. And if you look at de Grassi, for example, de Grassi describes techniques for using the big two-handed sword, the sword that comes up to your chin when it points on the ground, or maybe up to your head, a very big five or six foot long sword. And he actually uses it um, against a single opponent like a one-handed spear. And he says you use the point predominantly, and you do in fact lance the thing out. Um, so you might support it with your, with your other hand, and you lance the thing out one-handed, uh, either from the front of the grip or the back of the grip, as you like, um, against a single opponent, and he says then you employ cuts, using it like a great big, uh, like a pole weapon, like a staff weapon almost, um, or a quarter staff, against multiple opponents. Um, so there we go, there are a variety of ways you can use the long sword, or two-handed sword, or bastard sword, uh, in one hand, and it's very important to um, emphasize that these terms applied to specific types of weapon uh, are really a modern thing. And although these terms did have use in the historical periods we're studying, we're not always clear on what weapon is being used to describe, uh, to, to, to attach to a certain term. And as a final parting example I use of that, if you look at uh, Joseph Swetnam's treatise of uh, 1617, 
he uses the term longsword very clearly to refer to probably what we would describe, what most people would describe today as a rapier or a side sword. He's describing a sword that can cut and thrust but is a one-handed sword with a long blade and a rapier type hilt. So the terms could mean completely different things at different times to different people, just as they do now. Okay, so at the end of the day, this is a sword. Thank you.